Hello and welcome to another jungle tutorial and in this one we are going to be talking about one of the most important facets of jungling and that's impacting the map through ganking. But no, not your run of the mill ordinary ganks, I'm talking about little things that can change your ganks from effective to dominant. We are going to look at 5 very important basically borderline OP strategies around your ganking that will let you take control of lanes and games much sooner than you otherwise could. So if you do enjoy these jungle guides and want more of them for season 9 specifically, please click the like button. And let us know your best ganks for your favorite champion in the comments below. Now a couple months ago I did do a video on vision tricks you can use to manipulate the enemy by going around wards, minions and basically remaining unseen throughout your map navigation as a jungler. I'll link that in the description. But now what I want to focus on is what happens if there are and are not wards around certain crucial bushes when you are trying to gank. Naturally you should always have the ganking checklist ready. What summoners are available for the enemy laner and your laner. Which lane is pushing. Now naturally if the enemy is pushing it makes your gank much easier. And laners you can really help set up your jungler by letting that minion wave crash into you a bit and preparing for a nice long lane. And keep in mind the dashes and ultimates available to both laners and which ones are currently up or not because that can change the nature of how the gank goes in addition to the fact that you can exploit certain cooldowns by repeat ganking. Now this first example will seem simple on the face of it but has a lot we can break down and use to extrapolate for the rest of this video. Firstly, if a lane is pushing and you know there is no vision in that maybe you have control wards down or your laner has timed it or you've timed it yourself, either way you know there's perhaps no vision but you want to have the best angle of attack on a lane that has dashes, CC, disengage, much like an Aatrox does. So in this case you'll notice the Elise paths around the top. Look at the arrow. She does not go straight around the rock and into Aatrox. She hovers around the edge and enters the side lane bush because now she can come up from behind him and use her CC whenever it's most advantageous for her to do so. Aatrox can easily use his E and Q and W basically his whole kit to evade her gank and get out. So for her having a good angle of approach around vision potentially and at least being able to flank at an angle that gives her options is most imperative. Now the person she's ganking for is Jace who doesn't really have any strong CC of his own to set up the gank. You'll also notice that the Aatrox had moved back into the lane prior to her showing up which is why the importance of her using the scanner there cannot be underestimated. Because she respected the vision granted by Aatrox's minions and himself, used the scanner to check the bush, his behavior is the only indicator that they have now of if he knows that she's there. Clearly he doesn't know that, she hits her E, Jace follows up with burst along with her burst and he dies almost instantly. In this case they knew his ultimate wasn't up and so it was pretty easy to full on engage once the first CC hit. Oh but hello, look the enemy jungle Karthus has popped out of the bush there which would explain the Aatrox's change in behavior. So if we look at it from the vision of the other team, you'll see that they had to actually try to set up a lane gank, but Aatrox changed his behavior way too much. He pulled all the way back trying to bait the Jace to come in, and that kind of body language is really easy to read, especially if you're playing with other higher skill players. And while Elise and Jace didn't really know Karthus was there, they knew something was up, so as soon as she was able to pull the trigger, they did, and now the Karthus can do nothing about it. We will look at lane ganks in a second and they basically form the core point of this video which is leading up to it. Now what happens if this is a similar gank that you have instead of being at least you can be anyone you like but you know there is vision there. Taking the slow pathing and going around and making sure that you're not detected so that you have the best angle of attack won't always work. Sometimes if it's warded you just need to go and a lot of times people hesitate. Any hesitation in a gank like this will render it less likely to succeed. Let's look now at an example in the bottom lane again using the same sort of ganking pattern because when it's warded in the river bush there it can be very difficult to approach in a way that lets you get any CC off or have a successful gank. In the case of the Rengar the fact that he's camouflaged doesn't matter because they have a control ward up and so he will be spotted. In these situations you don't want to take that long path that the Elise does because now it's about time. You know you're going to be spotted instantly and thus getting to your target is the most important goal. These ganks usually work much better if there is CC in the lane because if you can hit your CC in the lane you can easily follow up with your damage or follow up CC or whatever is necessary. Oftentimes when I'm ganking through tri bushes I actually let my team know ahead of time I'm coming go as soon as I cross tri bush because you want them to engage full on get dashes burned get flashes burned so when you arrive it's much easier to secure that kill. Now in this situation the Talia 
hits her W onto the Gragas and that sets up the Rengar nicely for the follow up bush jumps and cat things that he does to clean up kills. If she had missed that it would have been much more difficult to do so because he was disengaged on by the Gragas' body slam. You also have to pay attention to what the enemy team has in order to turn ganks onto you in terms of CC, burst and disengage. The fact that Tatalia hits her W sets up the Rengar nicely for success. But that's because he knew it was warded that he watched the Gragas move there and place one. And when laners place wards in the rivers like that, they get way more confident and less likely to be hesitant about trading with the enemy, which you saw they just did prior to Rengar showing up. So that patience again, the overarching concept of waiting for the right moment pays off once again. But instead of taking a long looping path, he went straight away because it was warded. Understanding when to use each of these is a big game changer in terms of your early game ganks. Keep an eye on the map for when wards are placed and the surprise the enemy has when you come running out of the gates, even with Predator or whatever champion you are, can really set you up for the next tip. Now let's talk about what the Kyathus was trying to do in our first example, lane gank. What we mean by lane gang is where you approach the enemy laners from your side, from your tower basically. And you can either full on engage through the lane depending on your champion's ability kit, or if you're a more normal jungler who doesn't have camo or speed ups and things like that, you want to sneak into the sideline bushes by paying attention to the minion waves. That means if the minion wave is beyond the bush you wish to enter, you can sneak in there without being seen. And while that's strong and we will talk about it and it does relate to what I'm saying, I am putting emphasis on running down the lane with a specific champion that can do so. There are a lot and you can also use different sorts of mechanics to make it work. Lane ganks are the things that will win you games way more than if you don't do them. They're the ways to surprise laners because they can't see from behind your tower. They're less likely to expect you to come running down the lane. And yes, the list of champions you can do that with ranges from Nunu to Scion to Rengar to Twitch to Kane through a wall. If you have a speed up, mobility, invis or camo, you can do a lane gank. However, if you have a Thresh and a Maokai, that can work as well. The Lantern into a WQ is just such a devastating combination. Now, why am I focusing so heavily on lane ganks from a jungler's perspective? It's because I believe it's one of the most underrated mechanics and it actually took me a lot longer to find relevant footage of specific lane ganks, even for champions that are really good at it. And I'm surprised because it's something that in lower elos will really win games quite easily. And in a sort of test, I went in with Nunu and Maokai to see, basically, if I don't gank and have an impact on the map, I'm not going to be able to outfarm the enemy, so I have to force myself to camp lanes, repeat gank, and use my lane gank ability in order to get leads. If you've done those quintessential ganks coming in from normal angles and things like that, consistent lane ganks is something that will completely demoralize the enemy, especially if you're Nunu, and you have a laner who can engage with CC prior to you arriving. When laners have vision, as I said before, they have security of mind. They think they are safe. They are never safe from lane ganks if you have the right kit and right execution for them to succeed. And there's nothing more tilting as a support than pushing up the side lanes and there's a jungler sitting in the bush. Because sometimes you don't necessarily need to run straight down the lane. You can also use vision or lack thereof and minion waves that are pushing to sneak into bushes like this Rengar does here that allows him to get off a kill before the enemy can react. And if we switch the vision, you see that he didn't see the Rengar come into the bush, even though it was very tight, and he pays the price for his aggression. Know the enemies you're ganking for, what CCs are up, what spells are up, what ultimates are up, and when you do a more conventional gank to burn the free flashes and things like that, come from the lane and there is basically no escape. And when I say I want you to spam lane gank, I really do mean it. Repeat and abuse. Even if you're having a horrible time in the jungle, the enemy has the vision, the scuttles and everything, you can still do your lane ganks to get lanes ahead and catch yourself back up. With things like Evelyn here, you'll notice I see the pink ward in the side bush as I'm going into the river. That means instead of going, you know, top down lane gank, I'm just going to flank from the side. I need to be patient, wait for the Katarina to use her jump, and then I can follow up, flash, engage, and escape the bot ult with my ult. A very simple principle of just being patient in lanes. Or let's shift to Evelyn on the bottom side. The enemy ADC is dead, and I sneak into the lane in the side bush, and even if I wasn't camouflaged and the lane was pushing, I might have been able to do it, but of course, I have an inherent advantage here as Evelyn. We surprise the Yi and we secure a kill. Now, our fourth and fifth tips are brief, but still very important. We're going to start with ganking after counter jungling. Now, we talked about angle of attack in the first example, and this is all the more beneficial when you are counter jungling. 
Taking their camps and then moving into lanes afterward is one of the best angles of approach because the enemy just doesn't expect you to show up from their side of the map and get off a surprise gank. If you're Kane, this is always a classic move using your E to flank through walls they didn't expect you to come from. A lot of junglers go counter jungling and then are so concerned about being collapsed on or perhaps not really aware of the benefit they have in this position that they sort of just fall back to the scuttle in their own camps. Even in the Zyra case where it doesn't go too well, we're able to get a double kill off on the enemy bot lane. All because they just really didn't expect me to come from their blue side. Because it wasn't warded, the enemy jungler wasn't active in his map movement, and I could sneak one over on them. Finally, the fifth tip might seem trivial to you and maybe just filling it up, but I'm really not. What has the common theme been throughout all these phases of the video? I've used the word patience a lot, and it's not to be underselled. Knowing exactly when to go in and watching the lanes very carefully, paying attention to wards, you saw the Elise. She hesitated, waited for the right moment to land her skill shot. The Rengar waited to use his ultimate in the bottom lane until after the Gragas had used his ult in trying to kill his ADC. All of these things, these little few ticks of patience that you have to abuse the right moment to go in, can definitely be the biggest difference in ganks. And if you go watch VODs of high, low elos, mid MMRs, whatever, you will see a big difference in how people approach ganks and where they use their pauses in a strategic way versus simply just rushing in at whatever moment they feel necessary. Instill some patience into your game, but not too much. Don't sit around for five minutes waiting for that gank. And use that patience to pick the right moment to go in and get those kills, get those ganks off. Help your teammates, burn sums, get kills, turn that into objectives, and win games. As long as you exercise a strong mental fortitude, you have patience and you understand how to use the full array of ganking procedures in every single game. And remember, pick a lane to gank, keep that unrelenting pressure no matter what, you will definitely see significantly more success than if you were doing otherwise. Thank you very much for watching these ganking tips. Please check out those other videos in the description if you are interested in different perspectives and ideas. Please like, share and comment if you enjoyed. It really helps push the video on YouTube. Please think about joining below the video if you want to officially support the channel, kind of like Twitch subbing basically. Subscribe for more League of Legends and Jungle videos coming very soon, and I will see you all in the next tutorial.